Hello, hello, there we go. Uh, welcome back. Uh, I'm joined by uh, Jeff Capes, he's from the National Butchery Guard Society. Um, the Manchester Pet Show has announced the uh, Butchery Guard Society will be exhibiting in one of its four amazing animal zones uh, and uh, to show his support. Former World's Strongest Man and uh, now Budgery Guy enthusiast Jeff Capes is here uh, and he's going to be attending uh, the show as an ambassador uh, for the society. Uh, Jeff, thank you very much for coming along and joining us. Pleasure. Um, tell us first of all how you've gone from the shop put, World's Strongest Man to the Budgery Guy uh, enthusiast and, and passion. Well, my father always kept Budgery Guys when I was a kid, that's the first thing. So I, I knew a little bit about them. But in sport, in athletics, and especially strongman, uh, everybody used to see the nasty side of me, the aggressive side. So uh, I try to create a balance and try to find something that has a nice, kind of calming side. And um, I went to arrest a boy when I was in the police force. <laughs> and um, I knocked on his door and in his front room was all these budgery cars, you know. And I forgot about the warrant. <laughs> and I went into his house, he invited me to, to, to learn about all the different colours of budgery cars. So I was there for about an hour, and I said, oh, by the way, mate, you're nicked. <laughs> so I actually arrested him, you know, and uh, I took him to the police station, brought him back, and he gave me my first three pairs of buttery guards. So uh, that was the start of the hobby. But uh, as it went on, my, my sport, sporting career took off. Mm -hmm. And uh, before I did Strongman, I was uh, a shop putter for Great Britain. I went to three Olympics, 67 internationals. And then into the world of strongman, it kind of, after I retired from athletics, I went into the strongman because it was a natural thing to do. I also did the Highland Games of Tossing the Cave and all that, which is something that big guys do, you know. But the actual correlation that you've got budgies in one hand and a caver in the other doesn't kind of mix. But um, it's because it was cal a calming influence. Yeah. And I'm a fen boy as well, so... In the fens of Lincolnshire, as a lad, I always used to, you know, kind of pick up injured animals like owls and jackdaws and all these sort of things. So uh, I was very much into the bird world anyway, you know, so uh, I, I virtually knew every bird in the wild as well, so by name and by call. So I'm, I'm very much an ornithologist, but I love breeding and showing budgery guys because it's competitive as a hobby as well. So you're actually competing, so that makes me you know, just the ultimate competitor in the budgery guard. <laughs> can't say, well. can't let go of that competitive edge. Oh, absolutely. And you, you've always, you know, in, in anything competitive, you, I mean, we've got dogs here, we've got cats, we've got rabbits, we've got all sorts. And there's a show for everyone, mm -hmm. you know, when you think about it. I mean, you look at crufts as well, uh, and there's, a, you know, different breeds. It's the same thing in the budgery guard world. Mm -hmm. There's so many different, you know, co colours, for, and the, but the variety is budgery guard. And it comes from Australia, of course. And um, I, had, I actually asked the person today, do you know what the, um, the, 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 the Aboriginal name is for Budgerigar? And it's Betjerigar. <laughs> but that means good to eat. Right. Oh. Yes, can you imagine putting these budgies on a skewer <laughs> and, and then eating them? That's what the Aboriginals do, uh, or did do, because there's absolutely millions and millions yeah. and millions in the wild. So just tell us a little bit about the, the history of the Budgerigar Society. Well, the society, uh, well, the, the first Budgerigar that came into Great Britain came into GB about 1840. That's uh, a long time ago. And one of the patrons is the Queen. So, uh, and the Queen Mother prior to that. But the Budgerigar Society um, is around about 80 years of, of, of age. And uh, it, it caters for all... You know, society, clubs, different clubs throughout Great Britain, and there's hundreds of different, uh, you know, bird societies. It's it's mostly budgerigars and foreign finches, which includes parrots and any canaries and all these sort of things. But then they separated, and we have the budgerigar society. So, um, you know, that it, it, well, it's, it's actually just moved to Scotland, but um, we have a, a world show every year. And the society kind of extends its, its tentacles, if you like, throughout the world. Most of the top judges in the world are English, or British, <laughs> I should say. Um, we, we get invites all around the world. We have a very strict society, uh, not only in husbandry, but also in welfare. It's very important to look after your birds, look after your animals, so they get the best of everything. 
when you think they've got heating or lighting, air conditioning, it's the Spoilers. best food, the best, you know. And um, my missus go nuts, you know what I mean? So, uh, I mean, at the moment, I'm only carrying around about 200 birds, you know. Totally. So, yeah, but I mean, I'm, I breed with 32 pairs a year. Right. And each, if you have two rounds or three rounds, and you average five chicks around times 64, sorry, times 32 pairs, yeah. all of a sudden you it bred three to 400 birds, yeah. you know. Uh, and this show that you're going to be attending, uh, as an ambassador, um, just tell us a bit about your role in the society, and I mean, that must be a proud moment for you, attending as, a, as an ambassador for the show. Well, basically, I was invited, you know, from the, by the show, in fact, to, to, to actually attend the show. But the society, to me, it is now my sport. Although I don't compete anymore, I coach in athletics, and I have some very good athletes. But Budrigars, to me, is, is like my extended life. So uh, I attend as many shows as I can within a year. I promote the society together, you know, with a lot of other people as well. We're here on the stand. Um, we have a Budgerigar forum that you can actually go online and learn about, you know, the welfare of uh, other breeders. And don't forget, we're not just talking about competitive breeding or showing. There's a lot of people out there have got an aviary in the garden and that they, they, they don't know a, a lot about the different colours, the different genetics of the bird, what breeds what colour, yeah. and uh, literally how to look after them in, in the winter, in the cold, what you feed them, and uh, just, ju just generalisation within the hobby. You, you've got, a, you've got a, a, a very strong knit community of, of hobbyists and members of the society, which is not only competitive, but it has a strong welfare instinct. Okay, and a very strong competitive instinct from you as well. Oh, very much so. <laughs> you, you, you know, you, you, I am a competitive, competitive animal. You know. Just, um, uh, just tell us a little bit about what happens in the actual show. What, what kind of things we're going to see? Well, you have to prepare your birds to a show. You know, to a show. The, the, the up and coming show is the world show in Doncaster in November, where you basically get the best birds in the country. A bit like the the crufts, if you like. Of, Regards. So um, you have to prepare your show, uh, <coughs> sorry, your birds over a, a period of time. Um, you, you, you literally wash them, blow dry them, clean the nails, you know, and, and uh, keep spraying them to get the best plumage, the best, the best of everything. And you have an ideal to judge to. It, it, you know, you have qualified. Do you know, it takes nearly 13 years to become a judge in the budget regard world. Wow. You have to be showing for 10 years or more, you have to be a champion, and you have to go through a three-year judging procedure, and then you have a one-day written visual and oral exam after, after three years. So it's, it's very, very strict as well. I thought three years at university was a long time. No, so. no, no. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I've been breeding birds, you know, budget regards in particular, 43 years now. So it's been a long time, it's been a, a parallel with my sport, you know, and uh, I don't think without the birds, I wouldn't have achieved as much in sport and vice versa. Well, it's been an education for me in, in Budgery Guard, so I appreciate that. Thank you very much for, uh, for coming in today, Jeff. Thank you. Good uh, luck with this show and everything like that. So thank, thank you very much. much. Uh, afterwards, we're going to be joined by uh, Rebecca Short. She's